What's up? Today we're going to shut down two aggressive systems with a single refutation. First off, it works against early queen attacks, also known as the scholar's checkmate, which is one of the most annoying and disrespectful attempts of your opponent to checkmate you within just a couple moves. Surprisingly, it occurs even at relatively higher rating ladder levels, something below 1600 I would say, it's still fairly common. Secondly, the same system works against the bishop's opening, which is a much more solid way to attack you, but you'll be ready to face both of them and to get a quick win. So. As we go with e4, e5, and your opponent continues with the move bishop to c4, here, what do you do? Well, I suggest that you play the move pawn to c6. That is the most straightforward way to try and refute the move bishop c4, because you say, hey, you want to expose your bishop? Great, I'm getting ready to play d5, I'll grab the center, push your bishop away, and I'll enjoy my positional advantage. Therefore, c6 kind of pushes white to really do something about that. Now, in the early queen's attack, they usually play either a queen to f3 or a queen to h5 with a similar purpose of hitting your pawn on f7. Once again, like in modern days, they usually first play a bishop to c4, that's why I'm showing you this variation, not queen h5 immediately, kind of hiding their intent and also keeping it more flexible, so that here they may decide which, they, which way they prefer, whether it be queen to f3 or queen to h5. We're gonna analyze both. So let's start off with queen h5, which is the most aggressive. It attacks both of your pawns, and therefore you need to defend them with queen to e7. Now, what can your opponent do now? Well, there is basically only one attacking move, which is knight to f3. It attacks this pawn for the second time, but also the knight is ready to jump to g5, potentially increasing white's attack against this pawn. And here is the moment of truth. After knight to f3, we play d5 suddenly, hitting the bishop and the pawn, and your opponent may think that you simply blunder this pawn, because, hey, he can just grab it, right? Pawn takes, and bishop takes d5. For the most part, they all do this, and here after knight f6, all of a sudden, it turns out that you have this fork against queen and bishop, therefore winning the bishop on the next move, and white's attack is over, so you simply grab this bishop and get a winning position. In most cases, they take here, queen takes e5, and now we can trade queens first and then grab the bishop, or even grab the bishop straight off, because the queen is pinned down to the king, therefore the queen can now recapture, and not only you're enjoying your extra piece, but the queens will be exchanged on the next move, most probably, so you will reach to the end game where it's completely safe and you're a piece up, and you should be winning from there easily. The second attempt of white to checkmate you is the move queen to f3 with this straightforward checkmating threat against your pawn on f7. Of course, you could just defend it one way or the other, but it is your time to be ruthless. We don't want to just defend passively. We want to counterattack white and completely destroy their position within the shortest amount of time possible. So we'll play pawn to d5 here, attacking the bishop. In fact, we were getting ready to play this move anyway. And after a pawn takes, you just go knight to f6. You can now really recapture straight off because white is attacking this pawn twice, but knight f6 simply aims to sacrifice a pawn after a pawn takes, knight takes c6, getting all all these interesting attacking ideas, chasing white's queen, and it gives you just this overwhelmingly great attacking position. It's extremely difficult for white to hold here. You have lots of ways to chase white's queen, and on top of that, you simply can just finish your development quickly and rush into your own attack. And white is kind of clueless of what to do. Again, very difficult for white to find proper moves here and to hold this position. Mostly they play pawn to d3, just at least to prevent you from pushing your own pawn forward. But after that, it's not as safe as it may seem. You go knight to d4 first, attacking the queen as well as this pawn on c2. The queen to d1 is forced. Now you keep playing attacking moves, pawn to b5. This time you're chasing this bishop away. And after bishop b3, what it did is that it enabled you to play bishop b7, putting this bishop on this really long and aggressive diagonal. So here bishop takes g2 is coming. Why would try to cut this bishop off by playing pawn to f3? And although temporarily it holds, but overall, for example, after bishop to c5, white is completely underdeveloped. You can see that with this bishop on c5, it makes it extremely difficult for white to castle ever in this game, and basically white is in great danger. Overall, white could play some other moves, but you know, the general theme remains to be the same. You finish your development quickly, you have a lot of nice attacking options, and for white it's much harder to figure out what to do. For example, right now, if white plays the most natural move, knight to e2, that actually fails to a little combo right away. So we can sacrifice our bishop over here on f3. It is no longer defended by the knight, therefore it works. Pawn takes, knight takes f3, and you can see that white's king is really in big danger right away. 
King of Pawn is the only move, and now you continue with Queen to D7, aiming for this Queen to H3 checkmate, and White is defenseless. You've got simply too many attacking pieces against White's lonely king, and again, White is completely un undeveloped. For instance, if they go, I don't know, what can they play? Something like H3 to cover this square, uh, then you can just reroute your queen to f5, and that's still pretty powerful. You know, various kinds of discover checks are coming. If the king tries to escape, that doesn't work. You go knight h4, and then something like queen to f2 checkmate. Again, your opponent may try something else, but you can see that your attack is crushing and easy anyway. Finally, it could be that your opponent played bishop c4 not with the intent to deliver this color's checkmate, but rather simply to play the bishop's opening, which is actually a great opening, very solid, and quite unknown. In fact, my previous video about this video got over 2 million views, which gives you an idea that you may probably encounter this opening pretty often. So what do you do against it? You can still play pawn c6, as we discussed before, but if your opponent is not willing to play this early queen attack, which is indeed ridiculous, he'll play something more solid for instance, knight to f3, trying to attack your pawn on e5 and uh, make you defend it. But we don't want that, we want to counterattack, so we play pawn to d5. Now, against the normal bishop's opening, you cannot really like refute white and crush him completely because it's a good opening in the first place, but here is the way for you to get a good position. Now, d5 attacks the pawn on the bishop, thus forcing white to trade, and here, you know, e4 is coming, chasing this knight. The bishop is hanging, therefore the way for white to save this is playing bishop b5 check so that at least they gain a tempo. You cover with bishop to d7, bishop takes, knight takes, your knight is also defending these pawns so that white can no longer capture it. And after white plays whatever, castles or any other move, you just continue your development, bishop to d6, you grab this knight center, on the next move you are ready to play knight to e7, for instance something like rook e1, knight to e7. And you see that you have this strong center, your pieces are supporting it really well, there's no way for white to attack it any time in the future. And uh, you're just enjoying this comfortable positional advantage because, uh, you know, you're up, you have this strong center, you are nearly finished your development, again, white is more passive, you have more space, you have this open file for, the, for your rook, life's good, and that's how you can deal with the bishop's opening. Now you know how to deal with chess tricksters. What if you're encountering a stronger opponent? Well, primarily chess is a strategic game, so in that case you need to have a greater level of positional understanding. And if you want to achieve that, this free masterclass may help you do just that. Keep crushing it, and I'll talk to you soon.